name is possible and I'll be your tutor for today. Today we are going to look at microeconomics, which is demand and supply. Demand and supply is a very key concept in economics. Now when you look at demand and supply, mostly under microeconomics, we call them market forces. They are market forces in the sense that they control the markets. Now, these market forces which control the market can never be seen. Why? Because when you go to market and we ask for a price of a commodity, the price can never be seen. And because the price cannot be seen, we are saying that it is an invisible hand of the market. So we are saying that demand and supply are market forces. And these market forces are also known as the invisible hands of the market. Now, demand and supply. Demand focuses on the consumer and the supply also focuses on the supplier or the seller. Now, we are going to learn demand. And when we are done with demand, we will transfer knowledge into supply. So take a time or take your time and look at it very careful. Once you are going to um, learn the demand in details. God bless you. Now, demand is a willingness and the ability of a consumer to buy a particular quantity of goods at a different possible prices at a particular period of time all things being equal now look at it looking at this definition there are some elements which must be deduced the first one is demand is a willingness the first key is willingness. Willingness. Now, when you talk about willingness, now listen to me carefully. If you go to Circle and you want to buy iPhone, now listen to me. When you go there, there are a lot of phones that you go and meet. We'll be having iPhone there, we have me, we having Motorola, we having Samsung and those things. But the question here is: what push you for you to go there? With the mentality of buying iphone i hope it makes sense this means that you have the will, you have the desire to buy what iphone so in economics the willingness over here is popularly known as the desire the desire so what encouraged me or what motivated me to buy this suit or to buy black and blue marker is the fact that I was desiring to have them. So we are saying that demand is a willingness. You cannot demand something once you don't have the desire for the thing. Or you are not willing to have the thing. So the first key that must be present in the definition of demand is a willingness. Demand is a willingness. And the second component, so we could see that the willingness is a desire. Now the second component that must be present in the definition of demand is the ability ability we are saying that demand is the willingness and the ability of a consumer to buy a particular quantity so the ability over here when i went to circle or kumasi pz it, with the mentality of purchasing iphone though i was desiring to have it but the question is was my pocket smelling good to have it that is the ability i hope it makes sense then even the iphone why is it that I'm not buying iPhone 11 Pro, but I'm buying iPhone 7? It means that I'm not having the ability to buy iPhone 11 Pro. And that is why we are saying that another key component after our world, after our desire, is the ability. I hope it makes sense. Is the ability. Though we are willing to have the thing, but do we have the ability to accumulate it or to purchase it? So in economies, we are saying that the ability it's called purchasing power. Purchasing power. Please, this is very, very important. Purchasing power. So demand is a willingness and the ability of a consumer to buy a particular quantity of goods at different possible prices. So another key is quantity at different prices. Quantities quantities quantity at different possible 
prizes. Look at this concept very well. Quantity at different possible prices. This means that the quantity that will be purchased when the price is two Ghana cities will be different from the quantity that will be purchased when the price is five Ghana cities from the law of demand. It means that when the price increases, the quantity demanded will decrease. When the price um, increases, the quantity demand will also increase and vice versa. I hope it makes sense. So we are seeing a quantity at different possible prices. And we derive the law of demand from this concept. So a solid definition of demand must also include the quantity of goods, quantity of goods at different possible prices. Different possible prices. Now the fourth key is a particular period of time. Time also is a factor. Time, time also is a factor. Now listen to me carefully. Sometimes if you want to buy something, we look at the season or the weather or we look at the time frame. Assuming you are hungry and you order for a food and you are hoping to get it somewhere in the morning, probably somewhere um, 7 a.m. because you ordered for a breakfast and the breakfast which is tea that you were hoping for you were hoping to get it somewhere in the 7 a.m. delayed and it came somewhere 4 p.m. your interest for the thing decreases so we are saying that time is also a factor I hope it makes sense the food that will be demanding for in the morning will be different from the food you will be demanding for um, in the afternoon so we are saying that time also has an influence on demand. These are the four key components that must be present in the definition of demand. So we are saying that demand is the willingness. The willingness means desire. And the ability. Ability means purchasing power. So we are saying that demand is the willingness backed by a purchasing power. It is a willingness backed by a purchasing power to buy a particular quantity of goods at different possible prices. It is out of here that we got the law of demand. And then we are saying that at a particular, at a particular period of time, all things be equal. So we are saying that time also affects demand. So this is our first lecture. Watch out for our next lecture. Once again, my name is Possible. God bless you.